God knows when. Say it again. God knows when. Say it again. God knows when. One more time. God knows when. Put God first. Put God first in everything you do. Everything that you think you see in me, everything that I've accomplished, everything that you think I have, and I have a few things. Everything that I have is by the grace of God. Understand that. It's a gift. 40 years ago, I had a 1.7 grade point average. I hope none of you can relate. <laughs> I had a 1.7 grade point average. I was sitting in my mother's beauty shop and I'm looking in the mirror and I see behind me this woman under the dryer. And every time she looked up, she every time I looked up, she was looking at me, just looking me in the eye. And I didn't know who she was and I said, you know, she said, somebody give me a pen, give me a pencil, I have a prophecy. March 27, 1975, she said, boy, you are gonna travel the world and speak to millions of people. Now mind you, I was flunked out of college. I'm thinking about joining the army. I didn't know what I was going to do. And she's telling me I'm going to travel the world and speak to millions of people. Well, I have traveled the world. And I have spoke to millions of people. But that's not the most important thing, the success that I had. The most important thing is that what she taught me and what she told me that day has stayed with me since. I've been protected. I've been directed. I've been corrected. I've kept God in my life and has kept me humble. I didn't always stick with him, but he always stuck with me. So stick with him in everything you do. If you think you want to do what you think I've done, then do what I've done. On the days that I feel like I'm not going to make it, on the days that it feels like I can't endure anymore, I think back on my track record for surviving all my bad days. And so far, surviving all my bad days, my track record is 100%. People think when you get famous or rich that your problems is over. More money, more problems. But I'll tell you the truth right now. The problems I got right now, I take them. Because the problems I had when I was homeless, I don't want them no more. Money gonna change your life a little bit. All of you gonna get more, but you gotta ask for it. But if that's your desire to get more of it, you gotta ask God for it. If you wanna be happy or successful, you gotta ask God for it. Most people don't have the life of their dreams because you don't ask God for it. You have not because you ask not. If you up your ask, he will up his give. If you change what you ask God for, he immediately changes what he gives to you. The Lord knows when is my conviction. It is important for us to understand the Lord knows when to, dis to rebuke the tendency to believe that our lives are chaotic. You don't have to be in the same faith I'm in or you ain't got to call God the same thing I call it. But listen to me, you do have to call him though. It's not going to make your life easy. Faith don't make it easy. Faith makes it possible. All you want is the strength to get through your life. You don't need an education to be successful. I don't, I flunked out of school. What God has for you, quit tying it in education. People kill me. I know people got two degrees finna go back to school and get another one. If you got two of them that ain't working for you, why would you go get another one of them? I know people that's mastered and PhD though, ain't even working. You don't need that. I'm telling you, man, your whole success is tied in your relationship to God. You can simplify this by getting in touch with your creator. That's your key, man. 
When God gets ready to use you, he can bring an idolatrist. He can bring a whoremonger. God has a way of using stuff that you never even thought about. When God says it now! Now listen to me. I don't care if you sick. I don't care what you're going through. If you're not dead, he ain't through with you yet. As long as you're waking up, you still in the game, you can still make it happen. As long as the breath in your nostril boot, you still in the game, you still can win. Now get your butt up. As long as God wakes you up, that means he ain't through with you yet. And if he wakes you up, you got a shot to correct it and get it right. That also means that he has something for you that you've yet to receive. God loves you so much that he has something he wants me to reveal to you. It's going to change your life. God says, for well, I know the plans that I have for you. And for a lot of us, the plans that God has for us, those plans are not happening in our lives. He got all these plans for you. He wants you to prosper. He does not want to harm you. He's got plans to give you hope and a future, and you're not living this. The reason why most of you can't make your vision boards happen, the reason why most of you can't get to Jeremiah 29, 11, is because God's got a plan, but your anxiety is interrupting that plan. Oh, come on, your fear is interrupting that plan. Your trepidation is interrupting that plan. You are an emotional wreck. You are a mental wreck. Remove, I said it, and I ain't taking it back. Remove every individual, that is bringing your peace, amen. See, a lot of people won't try anything different in life because they don't want to get hurt. Pain is everywhere. But most people spend their life not wanting to deal with the pain of rejection, the pain of being disappointed, the pain of being criticized, the pain, the pain. I think that I've been working for. My whole life, my whole life is dedicated to this one game. Now I'm 10 games away from it. I got the paperwork that states I'm about to be an NFL draft pick. And I go out in a silly game against Air Force, two minutes left, and I go to make a tackle that I can make with my eyes closed. And I hit this guy, and as soon as I hit him, I knew it was a problem, but I didn't think it would be this type of problem. And when I hit him, every breath in my body left, my body goes completely limp, I fall to the ground, I blacked out, my eyes open, I'm still not, you know, too concerned, because it's football. When my eyes open, guys run over, ink, let's rock, man, let's go, let's finish them off. And I'm like, I, I can't. They're like, what do you mean you can't? You're a starting corner, get up, you can nurse your injury after the game, man. I'm like, no, I can't. They said, what do you mean you can't? I said, I can't move. Doctors rush in, head boy says, hey man, we've got to rush him back to surgery, he's about to die. And he says to me, you ruptured a clavian artery in your chest, you're bleeding internally. If we don't perform this surgery tonight, I guarantee you, you won't be here no more. From seven years old to 20 years old, boiled down to one moment. The sacrifice, the dedication, the commitment came down to one moment. And the next morning I woke up from that surgery, the NFL on my scale of life 
that big. SEC championship, that big. Cornerback, that big. I was embarrassed. That's why I laugh at people when they say, man, if I could just get this, I'll be. Man, if I could just get this position, I'll be. Woo! Man, if I could just get this amount of money, I'll be. I'm like, woo. But what happens even if you get it or you don't get it? What happens when God says yes and no? Like, do you have the ability to accept what you don't understand? Can you still see God's plan when it didn't go the way that you thought it would go? Can you handle when things get off course? I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, like, man, I'm eight games away and God is redirecting me. And I'm like, God, just let me get to the NFL. Didn't redirect me. Like, let me get the contract, then redirect me so I can help my family. And God's like, no, son, I need you to really go that way. And I'm like, you sure? Like, man, I need to go this way. He's like, no, I need you to go this way. I got something greater for it. Now, it might take a little longer to manifest, but I got something even sweeter. Like, I got something more fulfilling. I got something more rewarding. I got something, son, that's going to carry you for the rest of your life. Like, it's an amazing thing. I knew this was what I was supposed to be doing when one day I'm backstage and I got the same feeling that I got when I used to be in the tunnel before I was running out of Neyland Stadium. And I said, thank you, God. And so now I live my life a certain type of way according to what God has done. I live my life a certain type of way according to the power that I know the Lord possesses. I live my life a certain type. Like, when I go to the Lord in prayer, I go bold. We already know what to do when God says yes. We already know what to do when we get blessed. We already know what to do when our prayers get answered. But the question that I have for you in this rhetorical, what will you do when God says no? <laughs>